Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We're now transitioning to something a little bit more serious because that last segment <laughs> cracked me up. But now we're transitioning over to Slam Dance, a feature titled Savage Youth. We're joined by the director, Michael Curtis Johnson. Thank you so Thank much you. for getting Thanks up for so me. early and being, us, being with us this morning. We were just talking during the commercial break about the filmmaking process and how it can get a little crazy. Yeah. You told me that you just finished the film last week. Yeah, we just did um, the final sound and color mix in the last uh, week, um, which is crazy because it's a project I've been working on for like almost four years. And so for it to come kind of right down to the wire uh, as we get here to Park City, it was kind of crazy. Was that a, a little bit stressful too? Oh yeah, for me, for the, <laughs> for the producers, right. for the investors, yeah, just about everybody involved in it. But that makes it all the more worthwhile yeah. when you finally get to see it on the big yeah, screen. Look, at we, we got everything we needed to get done, so it's ready. It's ready to go. What is the backstory of Savage Youth? It sounds like it's an emotional roller coaster. Uh, yeah, it's um, a true crime that happened in my hometown about four years ago. Um, the day it happened, uh, I flew back home the next day from Los Angeles to right outside of Chicago. Uh, a group of uh, young um, kids were involved in a crime. Uh, two of their friends ended up dead. And it really sort of kind of replays the events that happened leading up to it. And um, yeah, that's, that's the story. It's a true story that affects you personally. Yes. What did you know about the people involved? Did you know them personally? I, I didn't know them personally, but um, they went to the same high school I went to. The, um, just the people involved kind of remind me a lot of the people I grew up with. Um, so to do some research, I went to the, um, the arraignments of the accused and the funerals of the victims and the, um, the court cases of the four friends who were involved in the crime. So I also dig through their social media, their MySpace pages. MySpace, is that still even had some existing? MySpace, yeah. Still had some MySpace pages left, with, like nothing uh, ever dies on the internet. So if you put anything on there, people are going to find it, um, like me, filmmakers. Um, but also their Facebook pages and then kind of grew the story out of that. And also sort of, you know, obviously we always take some kind of um, liberties, uh, fictionalized liberties when you're telling a filmmaking, just to sort of be emotionally true to the project. Um, but yeah, after four years, it's finally here and ready to go. It sounds like, too, this is a cautionary tale because there comes a point in a teenager's life where sometimes there's bad influences, you can go down a wrong path, and all of a sudden, something drastic. Yeah. Like, if that could happen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's shows kind of marginalized, you know, marginalized communities um, are in every city, I think, in the United States. And even in my hometown in the Rust Belt, it's kind of a microcosm of some of the places we kind of see across that area and um, I just think you know we've seen with opioid abuse and um, uh, just societal neglect sometimes these kids can kind of get off on the wrong path a little bit too quickly and uh, unfortunately in this case uh, yeah just something horrific happened. And what's your hometown? Uh, it's Joliet, Illinois Joliet, so Illinois. just uh, so just south of Chicago. So a little bit in the middle of nowhere? Uh, not quite in the middle of nowhere it's, I, I kind of say it's worth sort of like the um, I say that like the West sort of uh, the Rust Belt ends and the West begins. So it's just at the end of the sprawl of Chicago. It's kind of on the outskirts. If you know Joliet Jake from the Blues Brothers, yeah. it's kind of known as a prison town. For those that aren't familiar with the crime that you're referencing, I don't want to give away too much about mm. the movie itself, but what happened? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to give away uh, the specific details of it, but really, I mean, it, it's all four, uh, all the six of the people who were involved, they were all friends, they were acquaintances. This wasn't a group of, two groups of people who were, like, didn't like each other. Um, and really what ended up happening was just uh, jealousy, through, like the regular human things that happened that caused something like this to happen. But also, I think a lot of what ended up happening had, had to do with, you know, uh, class and poverty and race and just a lot of these sort of things that when they start to boil um, Some really bad things can happen. We have to see Savage Youth to find out a little bit more yeah. about the storyline itself Did you talk to any of the individuals involved in the crime to uh, get any backstory or research done? Like I said, I, I didn't I didn't actually and one of the reasons for that is I, I really didn't feel like I had the right to sort of tell the victim story um, But at the same time, I mean there was a part of me that wanted to one explore um, the, the actually the individuals who did this, the, the accused are now actually convicted. Uh, they did remind, like in some ways it reminded me, uh, I'd have to say of myself a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit strange, a little bit, um, a little bit weird, didn't quite fit in everywhere. Um, 
but also uh, I, I, most of my research came from just talking to people around town, uh, talking to people I knew, because when something happens like this, the, the rumors and the, the myths and of it almost start to kind of take on a life of their own. And so in some ways, I sort of tried to find some version of the truth, I think, um, through that process. And this is a part of the slam dance feature category. You're actually been involved in slam dance, so this is your second feature. Correct. So you're in a different category with filmmakers that are, I wouldn't say veterans, but veterans. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sort of like a fifth year senior kind of hanging around. Um, <laughs> you're like not ready to go yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no, but it's, it's great to be back. I mean, my, with my first film, Hunky Dory, uh, really sort of got my career going, got this film made. Um, so I, I can't be more. Um, thankful for my experience at Slam Dance. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us here on the Mountain Morning Show. There's a few more showings remaining of Slam Dance. Oh, for just, your just one. Just one uh, more. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday. Uh, uh, 315. 315, that's what I've written down here, here as well. Definitely worthy of checking out. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will have much more here on the Mountain Morning Show with Slam Dance and Sundance coverage. Stay with us.